We've covered a lot of material with respect to identification and authentication. Remember there are three different types and the type you choose depends on your organizational needs for security and the capabilities. In other words, how much money and resource do you have to put toward it? Type 1 identification is what you know. It's the most common type. It's the easiest to implement. Basically, it's a password or something similar to that. Type 2 is what you have. Now, if you recall, during the discussion, we talked about a security token. This is an RSA security token. It has a six-digit number that changes every 60 seconds. It's synchronized to the server. So when I contact the server, the server asks me or challenges me to provide the six-digit number. So I type in whatever I see on the LCD display, and if it matches what the server thinks it should be, I'm authenticated. Another example of a type 2 or what you have is a smart card. This smart card has an embedded chip and basically what happens, now, now this smart card is one that I use at the airport and it allows me to bypass some of the longer lines. So what I'll do is I'll provide this card, put it into the reader and it authenticates me based on what I have. Now that's not all this does. This actually works as a hybrid along with a type 3 or what you are type of identification. With respect to the smart card, it authenticates me or rather identifies me and then asks for more information. It'll ask me either for a fingerprint scan, which is a biometric, or a retina scan, which is also a biometric, type 3, what you are. So you see in real life, for high security, you probably may want to implement a hybrid approach that includes more than one type from the type 1, type 2, and type 3 identification.